Hello, everyone. Welcome back. If you have wondered why you haven't achieved your goals, especially if you're an overthinker or a high achiever, and you're like, okay, I know I've done this before, but how can I be more resilient about a goal that's really outside of my comfort zone? I'm going to share a few tips and strategies with you in the video, so stay tuned. Dr. Vernita Glenn White. I go by Dr. B and I'm your brilliant life strategist and advisor. And we are wrapping up our series talking about how to jumpstart your mind because it all starts up here before you jumpstart your goals, especially for the high achiever and the overthinker and the highly ambitious. And when I say that, and the reason why I'm singling, singling us out because I'm included as well is because we know how to achieve certain goals, but the true ones, the ones that are outside what we think is beyond our zone of genius, those are the ones that we, we tend to struggle with. Those are the secret ones that have been on our vision boards or in our calendars for a few years and we haven't accomplished them. So in this series, I've given you all the strategies up front and then each video I've taken a deeper dive into those strategies. So from one through three, because we're on part four, I talked about courage, to have your goals, to be detailed or conscientious about your goals, then to have the mental endurance. Today, we're talking about being resilient. And then our last one, which we're going to talk about how to be perfect in achieving your goals. So you might want to really stick around and hear that one. So in this video, we're going to talk about being resilient. And we know resiliency is really about bouncing back, getting back up when you're knocked down. You know, we hear the phrase, you're being set up or your setback is a setup for your comeback and, and all those things. But I want to take it a little deeper. And I'll talk about this in my book, Embracing Grit for Greatness, Becoming Professionally Powerful Through Personal Empowerment. And a lot of these strategies I'm talking about is based on that framework that I use with my private clients. And then also about the, the grit it takes to achieve any goal, especially for us highly ambitious and uh, overthinkers. I do agree with the being resilient is talking about bouncing back, but I also want to point out that being resilient is also about the character that you're building as you're bouncing back because you can get up and overcome a setback but still be bitter angry and have this wall and this shell up and yeah you overcame it but the person that you are on the other side of that you you were better during the struggle right and i've seen people do that you know let's say if they've gone through a, a divorce and yet i i mean i've never gone through a divorce but i know that can be really challenging and rough but then you see some people on both sides bitter angry you know un, you know don't want to trust people or move on i just watched the movie acrimony i know it's been out for you know a while but i just watched it uh because my grandmother told me about it and seeing how taraji's character was just hateful and this, this was beyond angry. It was a lot. So it's like, but then there are people who go through the divorce, you know, they've spent their time, but then they've improved themselves. They've grown, they've expanded themselves. They are a better version of who they were before they got married. And so it's not just about getting back up. It's about who are you, what kind of character building and traits did you take on as you are picking yourself back up and moving forward. So I wanted to put that there. Now going a little deeper as it relates to achieving your goals and jumpstarting your mind, there are nine things that I learned that goes under being resilient, your bounce back muscle. And I learned this from one of my coaches and I'm going to share three of them with you. So the first one we talk, we're gonna talk about as it relates to being resilient is having faith in yourself muscle. So remember when I talked about endurance and I said that there are muscles that we build and a lot of us have been around career, our um, business goals, anything that relates to like achievement. But then when it's stretching out, like maybe is it a money goal? Is it a weight release goal? Is it a creativity goal? Is it something that expands, that's beyond us? We have this desire, but maybe we, we haven't been trained to do it. We have to build those muscles. So having the faith in ourself muscles, that's where we need to get stronger when it's building out when we're talking about those goals that are that we think that are beyond us, the, the big, hairy, audacious goals, right? So having faith in yourself, and it's one thing to say that you believe in yourself, but here's the thing, 
And I learned this from another mentor coach as well. And she said, what you believe you build, what you doubt you delay. So if you haven't achieved a goal, if I haven't achieved a goal, like, and I'm saying this for myself as well, in certain areas, that means I don't, I don't have the faith that I say I do in myself. So that's part of being resilient. So let's say you, you say, all right, I tried to do something with my goal. And here's the thing with high achievers and, and, and high performing uh, individuals is we, we're used to getting things on the first try, right? Maybe we'll give it a second try. But after that, I mean, because a lot of us, let's be real, we haven't had to do a lot of things over and over again. Or if we did, we figure out how not to do that ever again, right? So when you're trying to go outside of what you know, we go in with the mentality that, okay, I need to get this on the first time. So like, let's talk about my book proposal that I, I'm, I'm sending out. Well, I need to get the, you know, my ego says, well, you know, we're, we are used to getting what we want. So we should get the first person who sees us. We should get the acceptance. Now, is that possible? Absolutely. But should I be upset if it doesn't happen? Does that make me less of a person? Does that make me less brilliant? Absolutely not. So that's what I mean by learning how to, to transfer our thinking when it comes to new things. So we may it may have served us well in one area, but it doesn't always serve us well in another area. And that doesn't make us less of who we are. So be, even if you got knocked down, let's say, um, I think, I can't remember, Sylvester Stallone and even J.K. Rowling, who wrote Harry Potter. I know those stories. I think Sylvester Stallone sent that screenplay out, what, maybe 200 times. J.K. Rowling, it took her years before someone like took a chance on her. And I'm like, look, don't, don't, don't take years for me. <laughs> but I'm just saying so. But that didn't make Sylvester Stallone less of an actor. That didn't make um, J.K. Rowling less of an author. She had that faith in herself. Like, I know what I have is good and I'm going to keep doing it. So that's what faith in yourself is. Even if you're getting knocked down, not carrying the weight or not allowing the situation to define your work and still push forward because even even with my book and I'm still sending out proposals I'm like look I'm gonna keep going because somebody is going to say yes I have faith knowing that my book is what I'm supposed to do right now at this moment yours could be a YouTube channel yours could be learning another language yours could be starting a business it could be changing careers it could be going for another promotion you have to know that even if doors slam in your face uh rejection letters are being sent People are telling you, no, you don't get the funding for your startup company. Like I know some companies I read in books, they went out after like 150 investors. Do you have faith in what you are producing enough to keep bouncing back after those rejections? I don't know if I have 150 get back up to me. I don't know, but we'll see. But that all goes back to, you know, your courage, your courage, your being conscientious or detail oriented, your mental endurance and now resiliency. Like those two go together. Are you really having the faith in yourself in your goal to make sure that you can achieve it? The second one is similar to faith in yourself, but know like, you know, like, you know, you know, it's like when you're making progress or if progress seems to be slow. So let's say, yeah, you did get the book, did you got the promotion or you got the funding, but then like the project is slowing up. You're not writing as much, you know, to stay on track to, to meet the contract deadline, or you're not making the product fast enough. It doesn't seem like all the things are working in, in place, but it's like, okay, I had the faith to get here, but I know it's going to work. I know I'm making progress, even if it's like a slow crawl. Like I know, like I know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I know this is going to be a hit. And even if people tell you to quit or give up, you still stay true to your course of action. For a lot of us overthinkers, high achievers, we're not used to that. That's the muscle that's kind of weak in certain areas, not everything, because a lot of us went to school. And a lot of people had to fight, claw, scratch their way to get some, some of their degrees or their position, you know? So it's not that you don't have that fight in you, but are you transferring that to an area that's in the secret place, you know, the desires that you don't want, that you haven't shared. So knowing like, you know, and that could be challenging. It's like, so for me, and I'll keep using myself as an example, New York Times bestselling author, there's nobody in my family. There's nobody in my immediate circle. Like now my coach that I have, she's a New York Times bestselling author. I, I, did she make number one? I don't know. She's on the list. But I had the desire before I met her. And now it's like the more I talk about it, like, no, I know that this can happen. And even if it doesn't happen with this book, 
you know, do I still go after that dream? Because you can still be a well-paid published author without making um, the New York Times bestselling list, right? So it's like, well, which one is more important to me? I'm still going to pursue it because it's really about the impact that number can have. But am I willing to know that my work is still good enough to have impact and influence if I don't make that list? So you have to know, like, you know, even if it's like you don't hear anything for months, <laughs> you know, but you're still doing the task. So know that, you know, so the first one was having faith in yourself, build that muscle. And the second one is to build an I know, like I know, like I know muscle. Number three is the say yes muscle. Now, I used to have a professor when I was in my doc program, and she was like, say yes to everything and then figure it out. That almost drove me crazy and insane. And that's a lot of things that came with that. But now I'm changing that and having a different perspective. So when she was saying, it was like every opportunity that comes to you, say yes to it and then figure it out no matter what's on your plate. I don't subscribe to that hustle energy anymore. Again, there was a time when it served me well and it got me into places where I didn't know I could be in. But then you have to know what works for you. I don't want to do all of that. I don't want to keep being busy and hustling and doing that. Not right now, not in this stage, but if that's what you want to do, absolutely go for it, right? So just because I don't want to do it doesn't mean that it's not right. It's just depending on what you want in your space. But then another perspective of that is to say yes to everything as it relates to your goals and opportunities. And again, one of my other coaches, I have a money mindset coach, she talks about this, is you're saying yes to opportunities that arise. So I'll give you an example. For me, when I was like, okay, I really do want to be a New York Times bestselling author. But even before that, I want to just, how, how can I get a book deal? Like I've written books, I've written a lot. Now I want to be paid for my words. So then the opportunity came for me to work with a coach who actually does that. Was it an investment? Absolutely. Could I have sat there to try to figure it out on my own and search the internet for it? Absolutely. But I was like, no, I need, I want it to be succinct. I want it to be already there for me. I don't want to spend my time searching for it. And I want to be in a community that everyone is focused on this particular thing and I can get feedback and things like that. So I said yes to that opportunity. In, in my coaching business, I, as a life coach, you know, thinking about some, some revenue goals that I have, like I have some revenue goals. And then I had the opportunity to watch this, this podcast from a life coach on YouTube who hit what $50 million and in her company. And she has a goal to hit a hundred million in six years. And I think there were three or four years in, and she's already hit 50 million. Now, even though she was just, you know, casually talking about it, it wasn't like she was teaching a course on it. But the opportunity to learn from her just in that small 34 minute podcast and to listen, that's something towards my goal. So does does that make sense? So saying yes to an opportunity doesn't always mean doing something. It could be learning something, watching something, you showing up, doing your work, or it could be investing um, in a coach. But don't say yes to things because it may make you look good. And that was the, what I was doing back in the day, hustling. But I'm saying yes to everything as it aligns to my goal. And when you start having that mentality and getting your mind primed for that, then the right opportunities will come to you. Because if you're brilliant and you're already showing up, you're going to attract a lot of things, but those things can be distractions. And for us who are high achievers, overthinkers, people pleasers back in the day, or even now, we don't want to let anyone down because it's like, well, I know how to do it. I can solve that problem. But this is where you be just a little bit selfish. Like you, you do the things as it aligns to your goals, if you're really serious about it. And this goes a little deeper. This is why I talk to my clients. You carve out time in your ideal weeks and you you actually map out your days like how you want them to be so you can have time for those different things because I, I make room for distractions because distractions are going to happen so I build it in to where all right if I get thrown off example today at the time of this recording I wanted to create a certain number of videos but then I had this call that was gonna take an hour and a half well I blocked out two hours but I was like y'all may not be on for an hour and a half now they went over I still got off at an hour and a half but I built in a window so I wouldn't feel like rushed to get back to what I was gonna do or if I decided that I wanted to stay on longer I wouldn't feel guilty because I was like yeah let me go ahead and not be so so rigid let me just give them a little breathing room and so you can plan for that but that 
particular call that I took, it's aligned to a bigger goal that I have, especially going into this new season of my life. So even if certain opportunities aren't like directly related, see how they fit, right? And then say yes to those. So don't turn down opportunities, like keep your mind open. This is why it's important for you to keep your goals um, before you at all times so that they can be the filter. Because again, opportunities may not come in the package that you're thinking. So be open to that. Here's one of my favorites um, out of the nine. So this is number four, your highest choice muscle. It aligns closely to your say yes muscle. So your highest choice muscle is um, I had a coach back in the day um, and she was like, I only do the highest activity that I can do. So for example, she was a business coach. Or she called herself a profit coach and she would spend more money hiring like VAs, uh, CFOs, CMOs, other people to do things to like, she was still write her emails, but to send them out, put them in the funnels, create her graphics, um, manage the books because she just really wanted to just show up and talk and teach. Her highest choice is looking at people's business plans and seeing their business models and finding hidden money where they're leaving money on the table. But if she's worried about, well, did I did the email go through? Is the funnel right? Is this graphic right? Did I post this on social media today? She's not operating in her highest choice. She can do that, but she will be the first to tell you that she used to do it all up front. However, when she started making money, before she would take money herself, she would invest in those areas so that she could show up more doing her magic, being her zone of genius. And I think a lot of times we don't do that as overthinkers because we feel that everyone needs us in certain places or we have to be everywhere in order for things to work. And that's not true. So what is your highest level of well, she says income producing activity. Yours may not, your goal may not be related to income producing, but what is your highest level of impact or influence that you could be doing as it relates to your goal? So you have to think about as it relates to all of your goals, what is your highest choice in that moment? Sometimes you do have to outsource. And if you don't have the resources to outsource, figure out how to call in the resources or ask people to help you to volunteer or rely on your support. A lot of times we act like, no, oh, nobody wants to help us. I'm just in it by myself. But you probably haven't opened your mouth. That goes all the way back to courage, Number video number one. So go back and watch that if you have not done that. The courage to tell people what you're striving to do and that they can support you. And support is not always monetary. It can be time. Yeah, those are some ways to jumpstart your mind so you can jumpstart your goals. So let me know down below what is something that you do to bounce back? Like what is a, a resiliency muscle that you use that either you know you need to work on or something that was an atrophy and you built that and you're proud of that? Share that down below. Let me know which one resonated with you. I would love to continue that dialogue. Be sure to subscribe if you have not done so already. Stay tuned for our next video as we wrap up this series. And I can't wait to see what is going on with you on the other side. So as you're doing all those things and you're like, okay, Dr. V, all of this sounds great, but I, I want to know more. There are a few things that you can do. Everything will be down below, but I do encourage you if you want to go ahead and book a complimentary call with me. And you can see examples of that on my YouTube channel, The Power Hour Sessions. Or you can sign up for my complimentary life class. And then finally, you can, to learn more about if you want the, the rest of the nine strategies, you can go to Embracing Grit for Greatness. Get that book on Amazon where I list out all nine of them and how I applied them. All right. So thank you so much for listening and learning with me. And as you're ending your day or beginning your day, remember to be well, be empowered, be bold, and be brilliant. Until next time. Bye.